your attention is shifting back and forth. Hey, what, what are you doing? Oh yeah. Oh, that's cool, honey. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I don't even know what much so. Yeah. <laughs> Earthy. <laughs> Description. Today, we're going to be talking about attention span. And I have with me here, Bryony Rust. She's a speech and language therapist from the Isle of Wight, which is off of the southern coast of England. And we connected because we both love educating parents on topics that have to deal with our profession because there's things that we we know and we like love talking about, but we realize that there's parents all over the world who could really benefit from the stuff that we like talking about in our conversations with each other. So we're going to go ahead and get started talking about attention span in toddlers and how to extend attention span, how to join in with our kids and really help them to focus on things so that they can have attention scans for when they start school and then you know high school and college and university it'll be a good foundational skill that they can carry on for the rest of their life so i'm going to go ahead and turn it over to bryony we're going to talk back and forth and share some tips and ideas and thoughts hi adrian hello hi hello. and um yeah so thank you uh, so much for hosting our call today and um attention is something that i feel quite passionate about. I think often it, we can underestimate the power of really um, focusing and supporting a child's attention in the early years and how if we can um, help uh, a child at the stage that they're at with their attention and as supporting adults and parents feel informed about, um, about that, then language can build on that. So it's a really strong foundation to be thinking about attention. I always get questions from parents saying, how how do I expand my child's attention span? And so what kind of ideas do you have around expanding their attention span or how to even, what that even looks like? Cause it seems really abstract um, yes. concept, like attention seems very nebulous. So what kind yeah. of things would you recommend or? Yeah. What do we even mean by attention? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we all, you know, as, as adults, we certainly realize when we're not paying attention mm -hmm. and um and i think it's additionally challenging for us in our modern age we have so many distractions and pulls on our attentions you know access to the world on our mobile devices that can be a, a real, real point of distraction so i think it's no wonder i think we can all empathize a little bit with our ch young children who struggle to pay attention because the world is fascinating you know everything yeah. around them is you know, so um, but I think there are things that we can do as adults to really support the child at the stage that they're at with that. And the first one thing that I would suggest is to think about our own levels of attention. So to give attention to gain attention. Okay. And so um, with very young children, when their their attention system hasn't fully matured yet. So mm -hmm. we often, um, I'm, I'm sure in America too, within speech and language therapy, look at the kind of stages, the typical stages of attention development. Yeah. And um, and it, it, for very young children, two or three, they're still, um, they, they're not able to integrate that whole system. It doesn't fully mature until around five or six. Okay. And so for us as adults to be observing them and thinking about where they're at and giving them our full attention is a great model. So yeah. I suggest to parents choosing five minutes of really focused play and attention time rather than half an hour, which is a really big chunk of time for for us as, as busy adults, busy parents to be um, supporting and um, focusing with a child for that amount of time. So five minutes of quality. Five minutes of quality time without really the distractions of the TV turn on off the, the background, the turn off the radio, just kind of like time or, you know, soft music in the background or something that's... Put your phone on airplane, airplane mode. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Put it away, like in a different room even. Yeah. So you're not tempted to even look something up like yeah because looking is a big part of this yeah so so where our eye gaze is really tells people a lot about attention so you know if you were talking and i'm looking over here it's it's going to feel weird to you yes. <laughs> because oh. and that's the same for our children as well they really pick up on that and so mm -hmm. if your distraction your digital distractions are out of sight then you can really observe in your child so yeah. give attention to gain attention and you can tell when the attention is totally there when you're when we're talking right now i can tell if you're you're engaged because you're nodding i see you smiling i see yeah. you going like this <laughs> and so we can kids pick up on things so fast and if we're even we're paying attention to them but we're also thinking about you know the grocery list during that five minutes of quality time just yeah. be all there just be present and yeah. making eye contact with your child when they're looking up at you because that they really feel 
that attention on them and it makes them feel special. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's about kind of being available. I love your reminder to be present because my goodness, that's a difficult thing to do, isn't it? Totally. And, and, and that's when five minutes feels a reasonable suggestion because it's not possible to be present all the time. We're planning or we're reviewing something, but just for short periods of time, that's great to practice that with our children. Mm-hmm. So our kids are seeing us look at them. So then we're, we're being a good model of what that looks like for them, that eye contact. So that when, you know, someone is talking with them, they are looking because they've seen it in their home with yeah. you. They're yeah. used to that eye contact instead of talking while you're also looking somewhere else or you're looking down or you're busy. Um, your attention is shifting back and forth, you know, from your yeah. phone. Okay. Well, what are you doing? Oh yeah. Oh, that's cool, honey. You yeah. know, <laughs> they can tell. They can they tell. Can tell. That, Absolutely. Setting that example is important. Yeah. yeah. I love that yeah. One. Absolutely. What else can we do um, to help their attention spans develop? Well, um, in, within our um, early years um, set childcare settings in this country, we often talk about enriching versus interrupting. And it's really tempting for us as supportive and engaged keen adults to always approach a child and kind of suggest what they should do or add a comment. But as us adults, when we're engaged in something, we want to talk about it, don't we? Yeah. And, um, and so I think it's really worth um, for young children, again, being available and present in a way that makes you, means that you're observing where a child's at. So rather than kind of diving in and interrupting, being able to think, okay, so does this child need to, does my child need to finish their train of thought? What's going on for them at the moment? And you mentioned about eye contact. It's often worth waiting until a child looks at you Mm -hmm. before speaking because thinking about attention development in the early years they can only pay attention to really what they're looking at so they haven't integrated their auditory and their visual systems yet okay and so it's really it's worth experimenting with your child and wait if I wait and wait for them to look at me then you can be really sure that you're kind of that it's really quality enriching language modeling that you're giving them as well okay so they'll be able to follow what you're saying better if they're looking at you Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I really I like to encourage parents to, instead of saying, look at me, look at me, but instead kind of wait in that pause, because then you're allowing the child to go at their own pace. And actually, in, again, in the early years, a bit of time going at their own pace, following their lead can mm-hmm. really support their attention. Later on, um, as they get a little bit older and you're doing more structured activities and kind of er- almost early homework type of th- yeah. things with your child, then then there's, there can be more of a focus on being adult directed. Okay. If you're very young children, you're two year olds, you can support mm-hmm. their attention by thinking about um, their, noticing their eye contact and letting them finish their train of thought so that you can then enrich by commenting on what you're playing mm-hmm. rather than interrupt and kind of break their train of thought. Having an agenda that you're like, yeah. we're doing this, this, and this, and that it's totally directed by me. And I think that's where a lot of parents get discouraged because they see ideas on Pinterest and they're like, this would be so educational, so enriching for my child. And so then they might plan something out, even if it's something simple. And they're like, all right, come on, we're going to do this, yes. um, this one thing. It's going to be really fun. And then they get discouraged when their child you know, looks at it for a second, kind of maybe gets a little bit overwhelmed and then wants to do something else and kind of walks away and they're like, come back. And that's when they see their attention span is short because they're trying to, di- to direct the activity and like interrupt what they were already doing where what you're saying is we could also, we could look at what our child is playing with or doing already, go join them in it and enrich what they're doing by putting language around it. So yes. um, yeah, yeah, kind of following their lead. And that's still, and I know just what you mean, that can kind of feel dispiriting, like, oh, you yeah. know, my child isn't attending to what right. I'm suggesting. But actually, again, thinking back to in those early years, being able to support their attention, because that's all that's busy, important learning that they're doing. Yes. It might appear to be on their own agenda, but it's still helping them to develop those really early foundation mm-hmm. attention skills of can I focus on one thing for a period of time and can I learn to share this with mom or dad? Yeah, so, yeah the play might not always look like how we as adults want yeah. it to look, but it's still right. helping their attention development. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, that's making me think of 
how adult directed even toys sometimes are that you buy at the store. Sometimes toys make it seem like you have to play with it in this specific way or it's wrong, but really um, kids are happy to play outside and like look at the grass and pick up the mulch and just watch it fall to the ground and like learn through experiencing in their senses. And so what, what it might look like if they're playing with the mulch and rocks and sticks is you could come sit with them and you can be like, Oh, I see a big, big piece of mulch. I see a little piece. Oh, look, do you see the ant? Where's the ant? Oh, is it crawling over? And so you're joining in with something, like you said, they're already motivated by what they're playing with. And so you're joining in and really enriching that experience for them. Um, instead of saying, okay, now let's, let's count them. One, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah. okay, let's, you know, put them in alphabetical yeah. or, you know, different things like joining yeah. in what they're doing and, and pumping in language <laughs> to describe yeah. what they're already looking at because yeah. they're, they're going to attend to that and focus on that a lot longer because they already were doing it and they're already motivated by, you know, the textures that they're feeling and the sounds that it's making. So, yeah. And I think that goes to um, intrinsic and extrinsic rewards. So that idea that do, do I need to um, kind of, is the child enjoying this activity for the, the sake of the activity itself? Or do I need to kind of give them a reward for paying attention? Yeah. And it's much more enriching to, if this is just something that I'm naturally motivated to engage with you in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, joining them at the mulch is a great yeah. example of that. That's lovely. Yeah. And you mentioned about kind of um, pumping them with language in the moment. And I, yeah, I think that's so great to be modeling all of that language. And again, thinking about um, when you are allowing yourself to fully attend and be present with your child and following mm -hmm. them, then you as a parent are in a much better position to give them really great language that's really tuned into what they're interested in rather than coming with our adult agenda. So Yes, totally. And I always like to think about each item that kids are playing with as having, you know, those diagrams that you make that has a word in the middle and then a bunch of different words that go around it, like a brainstorming model, mm -hmm. um, like a bubble chart graph. I always like to think about what the kids are playing with and then think in your mind, imaginary, imagine what words can attach to that. So if you're looking at a piece of mulch, you can think um, brown, big, little, spiky, pointy, rough, smooth. You can think about, mm -hmm. you can just label, yeah, smell it. Um, I don't even know what mulch smells. Yeah, earthy. <laughs> description and so you're thinking about all of the you see it as mulch and they're seeing it as mulch but you you want to bump that language out to the next level so that you're describing a, you can get a ton of language from just one little stick of mulch <laughs> and then if you have two sticks of mulch then you can compare them like this one's big get the big one oh I have the little one and then you can like little do a little battle with it and <laughs> Um, and then you can talk about splinters. Hopefully you don't get splinters when you're playing with it, but if it, that happens, you know, you can see little, little flex, you could peel it apart and that can be some action words like peel, rip, tear, those kind of words, or you could draw with it on the ground and scratchy, scratchy. So, so many things. It's a lovely example as well, because I, um, I, encounter some children who when I see them in a in a therapy clinic situation can be um, quite shy and unsure and then when I see that go and visit them in an outdoor at their in their garden at home or, or nursery and they just blossom and so for some children just being outdoors is so much more of an intrinsically rewarding thing that they want to talk about so I love being able to do um, help children with their language outside and not just in our kind of clinic settings definitely yeah. and then they feel seen and heard too they feel like wow what I'm doing I mean even though they're not thinking this you know but they they feel that emotion of connectedness and bonding to you because they feel like what they're doing is important like oh wow she's noticing that I, what I'm doing with this mulch like she gets it she gets me and that's really bonding for kids yeah yeah, yeah absolutely I love that oh I'm so excited to hear what else you have like ah. <laughs> talking about attention span and since I know it's something that you have really studied and looked into I love like bouncing ideas yeah. off of you. Yeah. And we've talked about that, that the kind of very young children and how there's value in following their lead mm -hmm. and, and turning up with our full attention for them. Okay. And then as they get older, um, we can help them to learn how to shift that attention. So shifting our attention from one thing to another thing is something we 
is a crucial part of attention development. And you mentioned about getting ready for school. That's a, a really important school ready skill because that's shifting attention is, is what enables you to be in a group. So mm -hmm. when we're at the carpet listening to Mrs. Smith, I can hear Annie talking and then I'm going to shift my attention and listen to Charlie talking. So that ability to shift attention is really crucial for being ready for school. And in the um, early years, um, we often, I'm sure you do as well, encourage parents to um, use their child's name, make sure that they're looking at them first. So helping them to shift their attention. So rather than expecting them to suddenly be looking at the Lego and then shifting to the puzzle, to kind of realizing that that shifting takes a bit of time and they might need a bit of help with that. So you might say, oh, Billy, we're looking at the puzzle now. Oh, I've noticed this. Yeah. Painting. Let's see if they're looking at that. Wait, yeah. see if they look at you and what you're pointing out um, before moving on and feeling like, because they might feel rushed if, if they have to switch and then automatically, like you're saying something, but they miss it because they're still focusing their vision on what you're talking about. So, yeah. Yeah. so kind of giving them a little bit of time to switch when they're younger. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's really important to kind of um, mm -hmm. get adjust and tune into their pace and acknowledge that that takes a little bit of time. And again, I appreciate that in a busy family life, it's not always possible to go at a child's pace, but I think this is why it's nice to have your kind of focus practice time when you're supporting their attention, because yeah. there are some times where you just need to get out the door to the grocery store, yeah. you know, so I respect that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a time and place for really focusing on, building up the attention span skill. And sometimes that's not when you have to, like you're on a deadline to get to somewhere yeah. in time. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, you mentioned about pace and I think that that is definitely something that parents are quite tuned into and um, can sense when their child's attention is flagging. Right. And so another thing that I uh, often suggest to parents, especially as you're getting ready, uh, moving into kind of more school readiness age and you're doing more structured activities with your child. So you might be um, doing more complicated puzzles and lotto boards and those kind of structured turn taking kind of games. Yeah. Then I often suggest to parents that they might sense when their child's uh, attention is flagging. Yeah. And that's a really good point to think about. Um, actually rather than trying to eke out oh let's do another 10 minutes can we let's finish the entire puzzle or let's make sure that we complete all our lotto boards instead thinking can you know let's just do one more and then we'll finish so being able to tune in and notice when your child's attention is really maxed out stretch uh -huh. or, you know just for one one more puzzle piece or one more lot lotto um lotto part and um, and then be finished um and it, sometimes with a new activity, children can be really engaged in it, but you want to make sure that they continue to be engaged so that you've got, you can really build on their attention, play the long game, build their attention over time so that they always have a positive association with doing that sit down time with mom or dad rather than, oh, it's always just a bit longer than I can bear. <laughs> I remember as a child, we used to go on bike rides mm -hmm. and my dad always wanted to go a really long way. Mm -hmm. And I have memories of always just, you know, for years when, uh, as I grew up, I kind of was reluctant to go on bike rides because I remember it was always just too far. And I always finished by just feeling a bit tired and hungry. Mm -hmm. And so I think about, you know, that's a, that's just that's doing a bit shorter ride. I might have been up for bike rides for a bit longer. I've, you know, I've, I've returned to cycling now, but oh, I good. <laughs> think about your, your time and your pace, the length of an activity to support their attention. That makes sense. So kind of, you're saying like end it on a good note when they're still paying attention, but you can yeah. see that they're starting to like get a little bit fatigued maybe with that activity. Go ahead and just say, oh, let's do one more and then we'll be done. And then you kind of end it on a good note, positive interaction. They're not totally like, you know, I'm so worn out. And then they might want to come back to finish it later. If it's a puzzle, especially we want to close that loop in our mind. We want to complete things, but we need completion. Yeah. It's like we can't finish a thousand piece puzzle puzzle in one sitting. That's just too much for me. And so, yeah, yeah. thinking about it in that, that term and like ending it on a good note so that they want to come back to it and they don't associate puzzles or bike rides with Oh, exhaustion. <laughs> yeah. or, or they don't associate you with exhaustion as their parent or their mm -hmm. therapist because you're able to 
help regulate when they're starting to drift off in their attention. And you, you can discern that and you can see that before they start to just get totally over it. <laughs> Absolutely. You mentioned about the kind of our, what agenda we bring to it. And it's almost mm -hmm. like as, as adults, as parents, we want our agenda to be for my child to pay attention and finish happy rather than for us to finish this right. thousand piece puzzle completely. So think about what are you really hoping to get out of the interaction and what's mm -hmm. um, reasonable, what's realistic for your child at the stage that they're at so that you can support them for the years to come as you know, these great, those layers of positive attention build up over time. So in our conversation today, we've learned so many great things about attention span. And I was going to see if you could recap what we went over so that as we move forward from today, we can remember the things that you talked about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think uh, my number one golden rule would be to give attention to gain attention. So choosing a bit of time where you can remove your distractions, turn off the telly, hide your phone and really be present with your child. And then thinking about enriching versus interrupting. So when we observe what our child is focusing on um, and then we can follow their lead to help them in those very young years develop their own um, independent attention and then enrich that with language that's really tuned into what they're interested in in the moment. So mm -hmm. enrich rather than interrupt. Like the mulch example. <laughs> yeah, the mulch, absolutely. Yeah, I was picturing that in my head, yeah. <laughs> and then as they get older, remember they might need help to shift their attention. So you might need to give them an extra moment, maybe pause, maybe say their name. Charlie, now we're doing this to help them, them shift that attention. An important skill for getting ready for school when they're at the carpet time. Yes. And then finally, um, build up attention gradually. So understand that you might start structured activities by being quite short. You might just do half a lotto board or a few pieces of that puzzle, end on a positive and build positive associations to establish really good foundation attention skills that you can help your child build for years to come. Mm, I love those. So, those are my top ones. Yeah. Thank you so much for spending time with me discussing and chatting and bringing your knowledge and expertise to the table. This is going to be so beneficial for parents. And I'm curious, where can people find you so that they can learn more about your videos? You make videos too for parents. and um, I do indeed. Yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, as you mentioned, um, in Britain, we're called speech and language therapists. So mm -hmm. we are sometimes called SALT for short, speech and language therapist. Mm -hmm. So um, my website is Salt by the Sea, as I live on a small island. Oh, wow. So if parents go to saltbythesea.com, then they can find all of my social media links and various information and videos on there. So yes, I, and of course, I'm in all the usual places like Facebook and YouTube, etc. And um, yeah, Salt by the Sea, and they can find me there. Awesome. Yeah, go check out Brianne's videos. They're, they're really good and really helpful and talk about similar topics that I do. And so I think it's really complimentary. And if you've enjoyed following along my videos, I think you're really going to like her content and helpful ideas and tips. If you're new to my channel here, um, my website is Learn with Adrian, and I have some more videos like this and then shorter videos that talk about specific skills. So Feel free to check those out if you're looking for ideas for your toddler. And this has been so fun. Thank you again for joining me. And Thank you. It's been great. It's really interesting to, to talk through these things and across across the water as well, show an international perspective. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> well, go out and help your child extend their attention span little by little and be encouraged that um, you're now equipped with some new ideas. All right. We'll see you all later. All right. Bye. bye. <laughs> Yay! That was, All right. <laughs> that was really fun. Was, I yeah. really enjoyed that. Oh, it, it's it's tough in the middle of things, isn't it? When you think, oh, oh, am I? It it's hard to kind of do something unscripted and make sure that you're still kind of being clear about your points and that kind of thing. So I think I think we I think we got there. <laughs> I think we did.